Hey guys, I hope you're doing well. I wasn't supposed to come on this week, but I'm really feeling it uh, just for a few minutes to say what the Lord has been speaking. Um, he's really been speaking to me a lot about uh, the church coming together and all our different facets and flavors. In fact, today I feel him singing over me like uh, Zephaniah 3 when it says he sings over you. I really feel him um, singing. Come together right now over me. That old Beatles song. Again, he's singing. Come together right now over me um so um it it was it's very strange what i was seeing what i was sensing i'm sensing uh breaks in technology like um i was sensing uh virtual conference rooms where it's not just an open zoom call but you can have a meeting in a designated conference room and i i saw that in a dream in a church context and and i kid you not Today, when I was looking in my junk mail, I saw an email from Zoom that advertised their new conference room format. I nearly dropped my, I nearly had a fit because this is what the Lord is showing me. And he, he said to me, in an impression um he brought back the scripture when it says um the the children of darkness are wiser than the children of light and what he wants me to say is his purpose will be fulfilled um and he will use anyone to fulfill his purpose so if we're not listening like like um i talked about remember in my last video i talked about how the lord said to listen he said if we don't listen um he will get his purpose done with or without us and he wants to give his wisdom he wants to speak his mysteries to the church but if he can't find anyone he will go out into the world people who don't know him or um or don't know it's from him just to get um a great idea but not knowing it's his idea um because he his ultimate intention is to get his purposes done in the earth now he wants to do that through us but if he can't find anyone to drop these um, mysteries and um drop these solutions to in the kingdom he will go outside to the world now i don't want him to go outside the world i want him to drop it to those of the kingdom because those of the kingdom have his agenda in mind well while those of the world have the, their own agenda or to make themselves better or to just look good in the eyes of people. But he will have his purpose met 
whatever he needs to do. And he's saying, come together right now over me. And that coming together, we're going to have to give up all those we, meaning the body of Christ, is are going to have to give up what we think is church. We're going to have to let go our traditional ways of worship, our traditional ways of doing a sermon, because he wants to bring something totally new, something totally fantastic that we've never seen before. But to do that, he's going to do what he's never done before. And the problem is, we're so eager to get back to quote-unquote normal that we're not, we're not, as the church, asking, well, what do you want uh, this to look like? What do you want us to do? And really, we're asking, but I think, like I said before, uh, we're afraid of, uh, we want change, but we want it in our parameters. Like, if he said, I don't want church on a Sunday, I actually want little small groups on a Wednesday, and I want people to go out instead of having a traditional church service. I want people to go out and volunteer, not as a side thing like most churches, churches do. But I want uh, I want that to be the goal, our aim, and not just Christian people to everybody. I think we'd have a fit. We'd be like, what? No Sunday church? What is this? What is going on here? Or if he said, if he said, I want sermons to be more, more interactive instead of a pastor preaching from the pulpit, I want it to be a more, more of a discussion thing or I want to add more practical elements along with the spiritual elements so we can bring them together and actually bring the kingdom to life. I think we would we would say what? We would say no, no, that's for a Bible study, not for Sunday morning. Um but I think he really wants to do something different. He really wants to break the fourth wall. And what I mean by breaking the fourth wall, in television, um, there are, on a set, there are three walls. Um, there are three walls that are in the room. And the fourth wall is the wall with the camera and the audience. So what I think now is he's really wanting to break that fourth wall. Breaking that fourth wall with leadership and their congregation where we're getting in the muck together, where um, outreach and all of that is not just something we do on the side that we, we hear about, but it's our agenda or like or something like that he just wants to flip things on our head and i don't think we really i can sense we're not really ready for that and he's saying we can get ready for that but in order to get ready for that it's going to take a, a total mind transformation. It's going to take a total letting go of what we think is church and what is not not church. He, he will be redefining 
what he wants this trip to look like. We just need to be open to what he wants to do. And we just need to let go of what we think is church. And he will set the order. You'd be like, Rachel, but if we don't do that, it'll be confusing. I, I didn't say do not have order in the church. I said, um, make it be his order. He's not going to. We're afraid that if we let go of what we think, it'll be just disorder and chaos. But what he wants to do is have a different order or do things differently. He doesn't want it to be disorganized or chaotic. That is not, not God. He said all things ought to be done in decency and in order. But the question is that I said to a pastor in a letter years ago, I said, uh, Paul said, let all things be done in decency and in order. But the question is, whose order? And he wants to, he wants to bring, let, let go of our, he wants us to let go of our order of our way of doing church and so we can bring his order into it so we can marry the practical and the spiritual not just in the ministry like we preach on sundays we do all the spiritual stuff on sundays and then we go out there and feed people no he wants us to marry the right in Sunday morning. So, for example, he's to, he showed me an example. So, let's say I'm talking about, uh, I'm doing a sermon on trust. So, I come in as the preacher uh, talking about uh, tr the spiritual aspects of trusting the Lord, trust the Lord, lean not onto your own lead not to your own understanding and all your in all your ways acknowledge him and he will and he will direct your path or make your path straight depending on the version and let's say if I was t talking spiritually about trust and then I would bring a psychologist um, on the stage with me to to talk about the um, emotional and physical aspects of lack of trust so that we don't only talk about trust in God, but we talk about lack of trust with people or whatever, just as an example. And I was seeing as well um, sermons being tackled in a different way. Um, what I found is, I love preaching a sermon, but what I found with majority of the sermons that I, I've heard, even though they're great and, and inspiring, um, a, ser a traditional sermon that you've her, where a pastor st stands up and preaches and sweats, sometimes in a suit, sometimes with jeans with holes in it, whatever, um, you know, you know, they're preaching and preaching and preaching and expounding the word of God, and people take notes. I'm, I'm sensing, though, that God wants to shift that to add kind of more to it. So, for instance, like, in a sermon, we're only tackling the, the auditory learners and the um, visual uh, and the um, expository learners and the note takers. But I was taking a program years ago, 
and they talked about the different um, aspects of learning, how some people are visual learners, some people are auditory learners, some people are tactile learners. So if I don't think the problem is people don't like sermons, I think it mostly is why people don't get it is because we, we only tackle like one, maybe two styles of learning. We, um, like we, we've got the auditory learners and the, um, note takers. If you're an auditory learner and a note taker, and you listen to a sermon, you're engaged and you're taking notes. But if you are a visual learner, if you learn by uh, being visual, um, or if you, you will hardly get anything from the sermon because it's not because it's not important to you. It's not because you're just not spiritual enough or reading the word, it's, it could be because we, uh, we have been taught to only tackle sermons on the auditory level, and sometimes we have visual aids, but it's not really, like, it's, it could be one little thing or something. Or sometimes we might have a skit depending on the church you go to, but it's not an an every week thing or whatever. Um, so I think um, what the Lord told me is say this is for preachers uh, now. Um, say the same message in a different. Well, in a different way. So tackle it visually, tackle it with the, you know, audito auditory, and then do, do something tactile where people move around, where people can touch and experience. And then you'll see how well people learn, people can remember things because you're tackling it on in the way that they learn. So, so um, I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to go on a preaching tangent there, but uh, that's what the Lord has really showed me. And also, just... Um, just his word doesn't change but his methods do and i think that we need to we need to understand what methods he's using now um and and another thing too about breaking the fourth wall um i oh i've always wondered uh why is it why is it so formal that when I have a question I can't answer it? I can't ask it unless it's Bible study. But on a Sunday morning I can't ask questions. I can't like when I'm listening to a preacher and he's he's he said something that I have a question about, I can't ask it. So I've seen it. I've seen it too. I've seen a total just interactive kind of uh, take the pulpit of you and me. We're in this together. We're learning together. I've seen that too. Just a total interactive uh, way of doing sermons, uh, sermons where you can stop the preacher and say, Wait, I don't understand that. Wait, I don't get that. Where we can discuss. 
I know people have small groups and whatever, but sometimes even in the small groups, you're just discussing the sermon. You have no one to ask your questions to. Like, what what do you think he meant when he said that? Or what do you think he meant when he said this? Or, uh, like, I have a friend going through this. What do you think uh, would be the best course of action? I see sermons becoming a lot more interactive. It's not just, like, you standing on the pulpit or a preacher standing on the pulpit preaching at you. We're learning together. We're fellowshipping together. I see a whole uh, new way of doing church. Uh, um, and I also see just general uh, people being able to ask after the sermon um, to do general questions um, like about anything that's that goes along with the whole interactivity where you could just ask your questions or whatever and just like I think I think um, for me for me uh, I think where the Lord is going is preaching needs to change its focus not a focus on God but we um, Preaching needs to always focus on Jesus and the Lord and the gospel. But I'm saying uh, our uh, focus needs to be less on getting our set of notes preached rather than making sure the people's lives are better by our sermon and doing the best we can to make sure that happens. Like, I know you can't make people do everything, but if we can do the best we can to make sure uh, people can get, can learn the, the most that they can learn and can interact with us if they have any questions, then it will be a different thing. Now you're getting into my preacher's head. I I don't know. I didn't mean to go there, but uh, there it is. Um, there's the stuff I think about. There's the stuff I'm getting. <laughs> oh, um, I'll see you guys later. Bye. Just to let you guys know, I'm taking tomorrow off, so I won't be on tomorrow, and I won't be on the next week, but I might come on during the week, depending on what the Lord is saying, uh, depending on what he wants me to share with you guys. Um, I will see you later. Take care. Bye. Come together. Right now, all for me. Because at the end, who cares about a bunch of notes if people's lives are still the same? Who cares about fancy sermon titles if people go back and still experience death or or don't know how to walk out what you've, what you've said. Or in their small groups, they discuss the sermon, but they still have questions and don't know how to walk out what you've said. Because there's no one to answer that question. Being practical doesn't mean you're being less spiritual. It it means that you're showing people how to marry spirituality 
with the practical aspect and how to walk that out in their lives. And small group discussion is a great thing, by the way. But I'm saying, is it enough when, when people have questions or are really going through stuff that they need answered? That's all I'm saying. And remember, preachers, it's not about you. It's not about how how, how, how much you put, put into your sermon or how much work it was. It's about does it advance the kingdom of God and to do people get what the, did people get what they they need from it or did you do everything possible for people to learn and get what they need from it that's what real preaching is about come together right now open me Take care, you guys. Seal this word, God, in, in the hearts of your people. And I pray, Lord God, that we, we may be one, oh God, like you prayed in John. Lord, I pray that you'll saturate us in your presence and with your love and with your light. In the name of Jesus, amen. Bye, guys. Come together right now. Open me. The Lord said he will use uncommon means to get his word across in unprecedented ways. So he said, get ready for the unprecedented and uncommon. And don't fight it because of it. it's not what you know. Let go of what you know to make room for what he's trying, what he's going to do. And what he's already started doing. Because in the long run, it will shake the world in the best way. Come together right now over me.